Here's an example of numbers again, and here we have their author, Ramsford Arnold, The Life of Langston Hughes, Second Edition, Volume 2, Oxford University Press, 2002. So we have the edition, and we have the volume number, because there could be more volumes, three, four, five vo volumes inside that series of books. Wellick René is the author, last name first, first name last, The History of Modern Criticism, 1750 to 1950, that's the title of the book. It is Volume 5, Yale University Press, 1986. So you can have the volume without a number, you can have the volume, it depends on the publisher, but here this is exactly what we're saying, this helps you to find that specific book. What about volumes and issue numbers? So here we have an example of Baron Naomi S, that's her middle name. And this is the book's name. And here, or I'm sorry, this is the journal article name. How did I know that? Because it has the quotation marks. Quotation marks means it's part of something bigger. The journal name is PMLA. So that's the journal. The volume number is 128 and the number, the issue number is one. So this information is included in the journal and we just go ahead and use that information as specifically as possible. Kafka Ben, The Demon of Writing Paperwork, Public Safety in the Reign of Terror. So this is a chapter in a book maybe. And here's the book's name, representation. And this book has a number, 98. If this is not a book, then this would be a journal. Since it's a number, I'm guessing now it's a journal. So this is part of something bigger. The bigger is the journal representation. And that is 2000 and page 1 to 124 for that article. When we look at publishing companies, of course, we've already seen that Oxford University Press is an example. They come at the end. Here's another example, Penguin Press. So after you finish explaining who was the author, what was the name, and what's the name of the larger container, then you have a period and the publisher. This publication date we've looked at but we're just gonna take a quick summary of it again. So here we have the author and then the article, the journal name, and the volume number. And here January 2013, why January? Because that is information that the journal supplies. That's the way they date their articles and their journal. That's quite okay. Belton John, Painting by the Numbers, the Digital Intermediate. Film Quarterly is the name of the journal. We've got a volume number, a number, and then this journal uses the season, spring 2008. Okay? If that's the way the journal does it, then that's how we copy it. How about information that is appearing online, but you need to reference it and have a date, but it doesn't include a date? How do you do that kind of thing? So let's take a look at that because I think more and more we do this, although you must be careful about referencing things that are online. If they can't be found in the future, that's going to present a problem. You want to do your best to help people in the future find what you're citing. So here we have an example. So we have an author, and then we have the quotation mark. So this is an article inside of a magazine. The magazine is called The Atlantic, and in this case, we have the very specific date of 28 December, and that's okay. But that's not enough, because then we also have the web address here. So what we're doing is we're saying, this article was retrieved online, and the specific date of this article was this December 28th. So that's a little bit better. It's helping us to find the URL address. 
that same article, if you bought it at the newsstand or you bought it at the bookstore or you got it at the library in print, would look almost exactly the same except at the end. We would have the January to February. What is this? Because that magazine, when they issue their magazine, they do it in this month by month way. And it's called January to February. That's the way they write it. So it's probably two months for that one issue. So in that case, we're going to follow what they do. Now, if it's online, we have to say, this was the exact date that it was retrieved online. That's different than using the print aspect. For television, you use the year that it was on television, the year that it appeared on television, or what we say aired on television. You can even get to be specific and say the exact day that it aired. So here we have our a Buffy the Vampire example. Originally we just used 1999 as the year, but we could be specific and use the day, 14, the month, December, and the year 1999. Now that's not to say that any time it's on TV you can use that date. Even if you're watching the TV and you see that show now, and now it's like 2017, December, and you see it now, you don't use now's date. Rather, you go back to the date it was released. The same is true as if you watch it online. Let's say you watch it online and you're watching this show, Buffy the Vampire, on YouTube. You do not cite it as being seen on YouTube now. What you do is you go back to a source, like I mentioned before, the Internet Movie Database, IMDB. You look up when did it originally air. What season was it? What episode was it? And what was the year and maybe the day and the month that it aired the first time it was on television? Now, if you're watching a television program and it's not on the regular television on the air, but rather it's over the internet like Netflix or Hulu or some other kind of online service like HBO Go, which is online, and it's not broadcast on air, then in that case, you do need to cite that it's from Hulu or it's from YouTube. So there's many different possibilities here. It can get them confusing quite quickly. In this example, we'll go ahead and say that we're going to try to cite a video that I watched, but this video was not on air. It was online. So in this case, we go ahead and use the name, which is Buffy the Vampire Slayer and it's an unaired pilot. That means it was created, but it was never put on television. But now I can see it on YouTube. So the actual pilot was from 1996. So we put that information here to clarify what is it I'm citing. Where did you get it from? What is the container? The container is YouTube. And then we need some more detail. Uploaded by Brian Stowe. If you're on YouTube, they have the name of the YouTube channel owner. And the upload date was 28 January 2012. And then here's the address, the URL address. How about an article on the internet in general? So here we have the author's name. And then we have the name of the article. And then we have the name of the website or the name of the blog. And then we have the exact date of the article that it was published. And then we have the address of the exact location. This is where we can find the article. And then we end with a period at the end. How about a comment on a blog or on a website? So you may read an article or you may read a review. This is somebody posted something in response to somebody else's a website, web page, or post, or blog. So it's starting to get a little bit confusing, right? So in this case, it's very interesting. We can here say, here's the person's name, Gene. And what is this? It's a comment. It's a posted comment. And what is it commenting on? This article here. We have the 
quotation marks because we know there's an article. The reading brain differences between digital and print. And this is, this is inside of a website or inside of a blog. The blog is so many books. And the date of this was 25 April 2013, 10.30 p.m. That is the date and the time of the comment. So why don't we have the person's whole name? Why do we only use Gene? Well, because when people comment online, they often use a pseudonym that is a different name, or they use a simple name, or they use a nickname. We don't know what the person's whole name is. This is all we see. We just see that this comment is from Gene. And what does Gene say? Gene says something about the article called The Reading Brain. And where is the reading brain? It's inside of a website. What's the name of the website? The name of the website is So Many Books. What was the date and the time of that comment? 25 April 2013, 10.30 p.m. And here is the address for the location of that comment. Okay, the way of course to understand MLA in practice in the reference list is to go ahead and give it some examples. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we have a list in the reference list. So again, keep in mind this is your reference list that's at the end of your dissertation, at the end of your thesis, or at the end of your research paper. How do you order things? So if we look here, we've got an order of Lazarus, Lazar, Lazarus, Lazarus, Smith, and Smith. Now obviously something's wrong here, right? Because we've got Lazarus Richard and Lazarus Arnold. Now those are different people. Which one goes first in the list? Which one goes second in the list? depends on the alphabetical order and including the first name if we need to include that. Smith, Mary, Smith, Daryl. So obviously we have a problem here. The correct way to do this would be Lazarus. It's the same Lazarus. Of course, of course L comes before S, but then A comes before R. And then down here we have D comes before M. So just keep in mind that you want to be following the names at the point where they differ. So if it's the same, then they get right next to each other, but then who is first, who is last? It depends on what's next in their name. Let's look at some examples of specific MLA reference list entries. So we have here Old, James, and Peter Milner. Positive reinforcement produced by electrical stimulation of septal areas and other regions of rat brains. So that's going to be the title of the paper. And it's inside the journal, Journal of Comparative and Psychological Psychology, volume 47, number six. And here is the page number. What we can see is we have the problem is right here, the date. This is the MLA's uh, method. I should say MLA is not to put it this way. This is the APA's method is to put it there, right? In the MLA, this goes down at the end. So let's look at the correct way. And we can see that it's right down here. So we have the author, first author, second author, the name of the paper, the name of the journal, then we have the information about the journal, like the volume and the number, and in between commas, we have the date. Very simple, very straightforward. Here we have some entries, and we have Hilgard, Permac, and Permac. But here we run into a special case, and I, I think this is a great opportunity to pay attention, because this actually happens fairly often. In this case, we have the same author, Permac David, 
but he writes papers with different people, or sometimes he writes multiple papers, but they happen to be the same year. So here, the H, Hilgard, Hilgard is before Permac, so that's okay, check. Permac, David, Permac, David, we have a little bit of a problem. These are both the same, all the way up until you get to the quotation mark, and then we have the name of the paper, and that's where we begin to compare. So it is right here where we say, are they different? And here we have an R, and then in the next one we have a P. And in fact, if we follow the MLA guideline, because these names are exactly the same twice, we actually should be using three hyphens. So in this case, we have the uh, Hillgard, and then the Permac, and then the Permac David. So here we have Permac David, and then Permac David, and the second time we use it, we should have three hyphens. Now, of course, that still doesn't change the fact that R comes after the P. That's the key point here. And I just want to remind you that if you actually follow the MLA in your final reference list, you should be using this kind of three hyphens for any exact repeats in the name. So we'll see more of this later, but right now when I'm trying to teach it to you, I'm writing the names out to make it more clear. Here we have another list. Let's look at this reference list here. So we've got a Hirsch helmet, a Hirsch helmet. And if we look here, we have two that are the same up until the end of their name. Then we have an and. E. N. Spinelli. Oh, this is a great example. And all the way to the second author, we have the exact same case. Same first author, same second author. But where is the difference? The difference comes in the first letter of the title of the research paper in this case. And here we need to follow the idea of M comes before V. M is before V. So we need to order it based on that. Here's another example, Gibson James. And then down here we have Gibson Eleanor. So this is a little bit more straightforward, right? James Eleanor. So the correct order would be Eleanor E is first and J James is second. Mahoney Michael. Mahoney Michael and Mahoney Michael. So this is a great example. One, two, three. Exactly the same name. This is probably the same author, which is very normal. You can have the same author, the same author at the beginning. But here, look, we got at all. What does this mean? It is Mahoney Michael. He's the same author. But in this case, his paper is with multiple authors, three or more. And in this case, it's with three or more. Now, if we were doing something like APA, we would see those other authors because in APA, the reference list, you list the authors. But in MLA, you don't do that. In N MLA style guide states that three or more, you make it at all, even in the reference list. So how do we know how to continue? Well, we just move on to the next part. We try to find out where the differences occur. So to correct this, we have Mahoney. Mahoney and Mahoney repeated multiple times, right? But this one here, Mahoney Michael J, has no more authors after it. But the other Mahoney's have at all. So this follows the rule of nothing. Nothing must be smaller than something. It's kind of a Tricky little idea, very easy to forget. I often miss it myself. So because there are no at alls, they're gonna line up first. The at alls are gonna go together after this. And then how do we arrange them? We arrange them where they begin to be different, which is the title of the article, E and R. E comes before R, thus we have our ordering like this. Now, one thing I can, point, I can point out is right in here, 
we would actually use three hyphens, no space, because it's an exact repeat. So whenever you have an exact repeat, you're going to go ahead and use three hyphens in the MLA guidelines. I want to keep it written out here to just to let you see very clearly who is going first, who is going second. But in reality, when you make your list, you will use three hyphens for any exact repeat.